G'day there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru and today we're going to be doing some quick tips in Python. As you can tell, this is going to be a series that focuses on being quick. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about the channel, I'm just going to focus on getting through the fundamentals of Python so that you can use it in whichever program you want to apply it to. I specifically use it in a program called Dynamo for Revit, but I'm going to aim this series to be generic so that it's not necessarily biased towards that software. Anyway, let's get started. So future videos is going to be a series of fundamentals and then we'll carry it on to how we can apply it to Dynamo. Um, if, if this is too long for you and you just want to read something instead, um, there's a guide I'll put on GitHub as well at this link. So quick tip number one, we're going to be looking at data types and variables. So getting started with Python. So in Python, data is typically referred to as objects. Um, you can call it data as well, but I think the correct term is objects. So data comes in a lot of different types, um, but the pr there's five primary types of data that you'll mostly deal with. So these are integers, floats, booleans, strings, and lists. You can see the types of data these represent typically. Um, strings specifically are text, essentially, um, but it could be numbers in the form of a piece of text. So be mindful that some of these types do overlap a little bit in how you might think about them. Um, there's a syntax here that's quite important. Um, so when you deal with things like data types, typically you'll be doing things um, as variables. So you'll typically do what's called declaring variables. And this is where you say that something equals something else. So in this case, you can see I'm declaring five variables here. I'm declaring an integer, a float, a Boolean, a string, and the list. And you can see the syntaxes of the raw data as it's been declared as a variable. And once this, this variable is declared, it's stored in your script to be called upon later on. You can see here, for example, I'm applying a function. Um, this is probably the most common function in basic Python scripting, which is the print function, which will return um, the actual result of something. So when, when you write in Python, typically you won't see the result unless you tell Python to show it to you. So typically you type print and you close what you want to print in brackets. In this case, I'm, I'm enclosing my variables. So when I put these in these functions and I run my script, um, you can see that the result is this. So you can see each return version and the form that Python returns it in. Um, it's important to note that I've been doing all of this using a program called Thony. So Thony is, I think, what they call an IDE, an integrated design environment, I think it's called. Um, and essentially this allows you to run and test Python scripts. Um, and so you can use this to follow along if you like. There's lots of other IDEs, but I find this one quite easy to use. All right, so that's the print function. Um, you can see here that we've got another function, which is to check the type of data, because sometimes in Python, you might not know the data type of something coming in, or you might want to convert it to another type. Typically, you'll need to detect the type of data in order to know whether it can be converted, to run errors across it, essentially. So you can see here, we've got our five data types again, and I'm just asking the type of my integer and then printing what that is. So you can see here, I'm declaring the type of my integer. Um, and assigning it to a new variable, type underscore int or type integer. Um, so you can see the key thing here is type, bracket, and then a variable or a piece of data. Um, and then from there, you can print it to see what it is. In this case, you can see that we can detect it is the class int or integer. It's important that sometimes in Python, you'll be converting data types uh, because you might want to say just get strings or just get integers. Um, so the function we can use for this is to call upon the class's name. So you remember those shorthand names from a few slides back? So str for string, for example. And you can see here that we're using these in front of a bracket with our variable. And the return thing will be in the form of the class that we're requesting. So you can see here I'm converting my integer to a float, a boolean, and a string. And you can see that I get them returned. Um, note that there's some, there's some interesting things that come out of this sometimes. Um, you can see here that we're getting a float, a boolean, and a string, so the integer is 1. But you can see here when we convert this to a boolean, it's true, because 0 is false and true. Uh, 0 is false and 1 is true. So you can convert some data types that might not seem logically convertible. Um, not all data types convert cleanly. So for example, you can convert a float to an integer, however, it will round it down, it will apply a flaw to the value. So be mindful of how certain data types convert to one another. And some data types just can't be converted. So for example, if I get a float, which is just a number, and I try to make it into a list, um, that won't convert. So it's important to note that sometimes you'll need to handle errors when you're trying to convert specific data types. There's also operators as well. These are quite important to know quite early. So these are add, subtract, multiply, divide, exponential, and remainder. Um, typically, you'll be using add through to divide more often. 
Um, and you can see here that these let you combine variables. So if I declare an integer and a float, um, note that I can declare a new variable, my sum, and I can just use the plus to add them together and then print my sum. Note here that I'm also checking the type of my sum. So I'm doing what's called nesting a function here. So I'm calling on the print and then I'm putting that in brackets and then I'm calling on the type function. So I'm printing the type of my sum in one line. As you use Python more, you'll get more comfortable with combining functions together like this, rather than doing everything line by line, which will make you more efficient in Python. But if you need to use lots of variables to begin with, that's fine, whatever helps you learn best. So you can see here, when I add these two together, note that the data type is changed. So I, I'm adding an integer and a float, but Python knows that it needs to be a decimal as a result. So it turns it into a float in order to support the additional 0.5 that's needed to be added to the two. Some operators are also special. So it's, it's worth experimenting with operators and seeing how they all behave with the various object classes. Note here, I'm declaring two strings. And note that if I use the plus or the add function, it actually combines these in a concatenate function. So it's worth being mindful that strings, for example, have special interactions with arithmetic. There's also logic operators in Python. These are quite useful. Um, so these are ways to check if things are equal, not equal, greater than, less than, and combinations of them. You'll probably be familiar with these if you've used any other scripting languages before. They're quite common syntax. Um, there's also conditionals. So you can, you can do and conditions, or conditions, and not conditions. So to put this all in context, um, you can see that I've declared a Boolean and I'm declaring whether one is equal to five, which we know is false. So you can see the first time I print this, it's false. However, if I say not my Boolean variable, then obviously it reverses it, it turns it into a true. So you can see that the second one is true. Then if I do an or, or and an and, you'll see that and is false because we're combining a true and a false variable. Um, however, the or picks up that at least one of these things is true and returns true. So this is how you can combine logic. So we're going to be going on to our next lesson, um, which is functions, methods, and packages. So we're going to slowly work our way through Python. Thanks for watching anyway, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Take care.